Hello everybody. This is an introduction to pastels. So just to begin, I'm just doing a quick brief over our artist A.E. Russell and how he may have used pastels or watercolours, but in this case pastels. So this is the main image where I can clearly see that he's used pastels. There's lovely blending here, but you can also still see his marks of where it's possibly done by his hand. You can see the smudges here. I'm going to use my little pointer. Smudges here where it's not completely smooth. It's got added texture, but you can see that it was probably applied on with his hand. These beautiful colors are lovely together. And this is a great example of pastel work. And we'll be basing a lot of our work on stuff like this. This is another fantastic composition where we have some contrasting colours of like this peach and this purple. They're opposite colours and to have them together but in this beautiful blend is just so eye-catching. You immediately see this um, image and instead of focusing on the darkest, you, your eyes are drawn to this. And this almost has like a figure in it. It's beautifully made out. And then you've got like another similar shape here at the bottom. It leads your eye all around it. And this cloud formation is fantastic. And I would love to try and show you how to do beautiful cloud formation. So that's my aim for this pastel is to do clouds with pastel. This is a little bit more subtle. So it is, you just got your white and blue but it blends into the sea so you don't actually have a line of the horizon of where the sky starts and the sea the sky and the sea meet together and I think that's lovely but you've got all the sparkle which is reflected in here it is a beautiful piece um yeah and very subtly done this one here now all the detail is in here but it's not that the, he hasn't thought about the um, the sky. The sky has got a lot of tone and colours and that's easy to create in pastel, which is what I want to show you to do. Pastel is so quick and easy that I think we can achieve all these slight variations but have it blended in and to make a really good sky to complement the further work that we will be doing further below the sky. So I find that as an artist, if I start off on a good note with a good sky, the rest will follow. So, let me begin. Just a quick run through of the materials I'm going to be using. This is the paper. I have both card and paper. Now, I got this in Lidl. Um, you may have seen it. It's in the middle. You usually have offers, but... The paper has a slight tooth to it and the pastel should take to it quite well and still be able to blend it. You can see it's not completely rubbing off so there is a bit of a tooth to it. And I got some different colours and sometimes it's nice to start on a black and bring a white cloud forward or to put some tones and have this purple still peep through. I have a variety and it doesn't matter what colour you get because... Um, we'll have colours that will layer up. This is a sponge. Now, many of the girls, I think, will know this is a makeup sponge. It is also used for blending and um, applying on the pastels um, and blending and smoothing them out. Now, that they, <laughs> they should be washed and I will have cleaner ones for my demonstration, but this is just an example of how... I can blend it in like that. They're fantastic to use and they can be used with the sticks or the pan pastels. So moving on to that, uh, the sticks you're probably already familiar with. We have different ones here. They are different brands that you can buy in the works or the range. There are more expensive ones, but why would you whenever this does the job? So this one here is $2.99 and it was in the range, I think. So I've opened it up to show you the colors. And you can see there is so many colors in this. Great selection of blues 
and then we got some lovely colors that could do sunsets and then these would be fantastic for the foreground so I feel like this as a set has everything that we need so um, when the workshop comes back together we'll have maybe one of these on the table and you can share them because these sticks go a long way this little box here I've probably had 20 years and um, yes there's some that have missing some that are broken but they, they last they last a really long time so I also got chalk chalk good old simple chalk probably a pound but as an example of starting off and just beginning to make marks and get an idea of points and blending and sides and squiggles and dots and an idea of general mark making this is good and it's a chance to just experiment and get used to the material that you're working with this one here in front of me these are pastel pencils now um they are wonderful for fine work so if you have tiny little things like trees and stuff and you're not looking to do a lot of blending but you want your entire art piece to be pastels then you can sharpen this down probably with like a, a blade and because a sharpener would tend to crumble and break it although it is quite strong it is still a pastel so to carve it down into a point and you can get sometimes a fine or I'm told if you rub it and you rub it in different directions you can make a nib out of it then and then you'll get your tiny pointy area so that I have a variety of colors of that and um, like I say it's only for fine detail work which as a sky you shouldn't have to worry about that because we're going to be mostly looking at um, clouds and stuff now these are blending stumps and they are just rolled up com um, compact bits of paper you can peel them off when they get um, used too much and they're just to push the pastel into the tooth so then whenever um, it's worked right into the paper you're able then to go along with another color and work on top of it and push it in this is not something I'm very familiar with. I may even be using it wrong, but um, that's that's my knowledge of it. I think we all learn as we go. This one here is pan pastels. Now this is a relatively new sort of um, medium that is showing up more and more. Um, think makeup, powdered makeup. So your pastel stick is now instead of um, squeezed and come back into a stick it is now squeezed into a dish like this and they come in variety of shades as do pan pastels um, sorry pa uh, pastel sticks the pan pastels come in variety of shades now these claim that you can blend them so I should be able to take some of the pastel on this and apply it on here or blend it in and create different shades by layering them up with two different colors the tools that you need is this it also works with a sponge these are little pan pastel in um, like palette knives type thing so they've got like this little sponge so that's the little stick there and they have a variety of different um, shapes of sticks that you can use and I'll see yeah, this one's in here. So we have like a flat tip, a round and a little thin knife. So that's an example of some of the heads of them. And then they have these which are little socks and I have quite a lot of these little socks here and I tend to use the triangle one mostly because for larger areas I'll either use the flat or I'll do that but whenever I'm using this I tend to always be trying to get into little areas 
which is sometimes a little bit difficult with this. But um, yeah, these are little socks and then you can take them off and then you make up a nice little bubble bath of soapy water and you wash them out in the same way that you would wash out your makeup sponges. This is the same sort of sponge that you would get in these makeup. They have exactly the same sponge and it's just the best way of blending. Now, I have this and that's to rub off some ac excess powder, but you can see that it's actually knocking, it's either, it's mostly taking it off. Now I have a soft one, but I do know that if you don't like your artwork, you, whoop, sorry, stepping away, you get a hard brush. So this is a, I think it's probably like a goat hair brush. It's anyway, it's a hard brush and you don't like it. You just push into it and try and remove it that way. It's not, it's, it's harder whenever you've really dug in with a dark color, but with a lighter color, it's coming off not too bad. So I would say it is a little bit forgiving, but for darker colors, not so much. With the likes of acrylic, you could paint over it. And I think for pastels, it's it's a little harder. I would recommend going lighter and then darker because I would imagine that if I was to try and go over the top of this with a light color, let's even do the chalk. Yeah. You can still see part of the dark coming through. Oh, give me some. Hmm. Let's see if that I could push that in. No. I was trying to push that into the tooth. Yeah, you'll still see the darker colour come through. Though if you were to do like an angel or ghostly colour or even part of your clouds. That might actually work kind of well. But yeah, so I think probably best working from light until dark. And maybe only using this if you're trying to blend. So that's all my um, equipment. I'll have all of this on the day of the workshop whenever we meet in person because these sets can be very expensive but I don't think it's any reason why you can't have a go at them and try them out because yeah, I think it's important that if you enjoy pastels, you should have an opportunity to try all these materials. So that way, if you enjoy using them, then you can make the investment and buy yourself a kit if you want to explore it more. Only other thing I can say is it's a messy thing. Don't wear precious clothes probably take some wipes and um, your hands will get messy you'll probably have a bit of bluey green snot later on that evening but yeah it's lots of fun and I'm going to do some demonstrations for you now